Hi, my name's Sarah Robinson. Welcome to my virtual Yorkshire Dales wildflower spotting course. Um, this is just going to be a little short video that YDMT have asked me to do um, so that we can all have a look at the lovely, amazing wildflowers of the Yorkshire Dales, even if we can't go on a course to learn more about them. So one thing that a lot of people ask is, uh, what is the best guide to take with me if I want to learn more about um, the grasses and wildflowers in the meadows of the Yorkshire Dales. This one is available from YDMT and this is what I'm going to be using today. I'm going to try and show you as many of these species as possible. Um, this is a Field Studies Council guide to common grasses, that's also very useful. And this is my absolute go-to Bible. It's the Francis Rose Wildflower Key. I think there might be a, a more up-to-date edition than this one, but all the information is still good. So these are the ones that I'm going to use today. So I've just stopped here on my little tour around meadows in the Dales. So we could have a look at meadows as a landscape feature. You can see the pieces of woodland on further up the sides of the valleys, the stone walls and what's really lovely about where I've stopped here, I'm standing in one sitting in one meadow and I can count possibly 10 others just in this little patch. Now I happen to know that this particular meadow is one that Tanya from YDMT worked on restoring so I wanted to show you some of the some of the meadow plants which are now thriving here. This is yellow rattle, the flowers here, um, labiate, beautiful sunny yellow and if I'm really I might just be able to tell you show you the purple anthers which are fab. Once the seed is set the seed cases swell and dry and become papery and they have these ones are not rattling yet but as they dry they then have a distinctive rattle which tradition says is when the hay is ready to cut. A smaller cousin but from the same family as yellow rattle is this little beauty down in the bottom of the sward, his eye bright white petals streaked with purple with a beautiful yellow centre and here are yellow rattle and eye bright together they're both parasitic on grass species so we use them extensively when we are starting to restore meadows they're also fantastic for pollinating bumblebees Okay, so I just wanted to show you two of the three common types of buttercups that we find in meadows. This is creeping buttercup, which has a golden yellow flower. And if I can just show you the leaf down here, the middle leaflet always has this little petiole stalk here, which separates the three leaflets, whereas a meadow buttercup leaf doesn't have that little stalk or from the central leaflet. And the flowers themselves, whilst very similar, are slightly more yellowy in colour, which only works if you've got both species next to each other, but tend to grow up taller to the top of the sward. And this flower head here is from Ribwort Plantain. It's a really pretty crown and just want to show you I'm being attacked by flies. Just wanted to show you the leaf. Lancelate, that means long and thin. Ribbed, you can see the ribs up to a tip. This one's got a little hole in it. 
ribs on the back. While we're still in this meadow, I just wanted to show you this species here. This is the flower stalk of common sorrel, which is a member of the dock family. Its leaves are down here, like mini dock leaves. Very tasty as well, good in a salad. Legume species, like this one here, which is red clover. Three leaflets. Very often this marking on the leaflets. Beautiful deep pink flower. This is a leguminous species. So it has nodules on its roots filled with bacteria that return nitrogen to the soil. So in these low input systems, leguminous species are really important. And here's white clover. This also has a similar leaf Where's it gone? <laughs> Windy. Has a similar leaf to red clover. The important difference between the two is that the white clover leaves are quite smooth and hairless, whereas red clover leaves are quite hairy. Okay, so we're going to look at um, two or three grass species now. Um, I think they're possibly the, the slightly harder to identify and differentiate but there's three or four species that are quite different from each other and characteristics of meadows in this area. Okay so this first one here is crested dog's tail. All the flowers are on one side of the flower head stalk. If you can see that. And you can see the whole of the stalk going right up to the tip. The next one here is sweet vernal grass. Cigar shaped, quite big flowers, feathery anthers coming out the top. Quite an early flowering species. This one here ooh, is perennial ryegrass. It forms part of all traditional meadows, although it is the species that has been um, bred for high production agriculture as well. But it does form part of a natural meadow system. Another grass species here. This is Coxford, and you'll notice that the bottom floret always points downwards and away from the other two, or sometimes there's two, sometimes there's three, hence the name Coxford. It's very coarse grass, and down at the bottom you can feel that the plant itself is flattened. It's Coxford. A couple more grasses. This is a uh, quite immature um, specimen but this is Yorkshire fog. It's really downy soft, pinky soft green Yorkshire fog. This is Timothy. It's a species that um, flowers relatively late in the grass flowering season. Um, wide leaves and a very caterpillar-like flower head. Um, and if we had our lenses, I would be able to show you a really good identifying feature um, on each individual floret. But they, in essence, each of the it has two awns um, on each flower. But I maybe have to show you that in a picture. So this plant we're looking at here is bush vetch, Physia sepium. It has um, the bluey, purpley, lilac flowers, one of the pea family as you can probably see and it has uh, clusters of eight to ten leaflets, tendrils at the end of the leaflets, you can probably just see it hanging onto that piece of grass there and compared to the similar species tufted vetch it has wider leaflets, broader leaflets and fewer flowers 
her cluster. This is meadow vetchling, beautiful sunny yellow pea family. Melancholy thistle, such a beautiful flower. Not very prickly for a thistle, but look, it has this beautiful, distinctive pale undersides to the leaves, both the leaflets going up the stalk, but also the basal rose, whoops, the basal rosette leaves as well. Another favourite with the pollinators. So here we have the Dale Speciality Wood Crane's Bill. It's moving in the wind. <laughs> Such beautiful flowers. The purpley pink and the white centres. Just stunning. So this is the deep blue of the Meadow Crane's Bill. Without the white centre and a slightly different shade and the cut leaves of the geranium species. This is actually on a verge rather than in a meadow but here you can see the wood crane's bill and behind it the beautiful purple of melancholy thistle. Wow this is water ravens. It's really beautiful. It has a very unusual kind of peachy coloured flower which is quite an unusual colour for wildflowers in this country. And once it's flowered, let me show you here, it produces, produces seed with um, hooked ends to the seed. So this is a dispersal mechanism related to, I don't know if I've got that in focus. So dispersal mechanism related to using passing animals and walkers legs and all sorts to distribute the seed once it's ripe. It has lobed leaves. These are the leaves down here. That prefers damp areas and is quite often sometimes seen in, in uh, road verges as well as the edge of meadows. As I'm making this film today some things are not quite in flower. This is meadow sweet serrated leaflets, red stem, is going to have a huge frothy white inflorescence, but maybe next week, not today. And this is black knapweed, bud of, not in flower as yet, in late June. Um, it has a purple thistly flower, often known as hardhead, because sometimes it's not even flowered by the time the hay is made, and so makes these hard little bobbles in the bales. Another purple flower that we see um, in lawns, uncut lawns as well as, as well as meadows is this. This is called Selfia Prunella vulgaris. It has leaves which are opposite each other in twos, um, alternately up the stem. It has a square stem which is very often a characteristic feature of these um, labiate family plants. Very popular with pollinators and has a creeping habit through the grass. So this is a real find for all the orchid lovers. This is the northern marsh orchid. It is a dactylorhizer, like the common spotted orchid and the heath spotted orchid. The marsh, northern marsh orchid is similar to the southern um, cousin, but has a more straight-sided inflorescence. Just to confuse us, this species and the common spotted orchid do hybridise um, and so you see lots of variations, especially when you have both species in one location. So I hope you've enjoyed our little journey 
through, oh, there's some hogweed there, we didn't look at that. Popular umbellifer with flying pollinators. Hope you've enjoyed our little visit through some of the wildflowers of the meadows of the Yorkshire Dales. It's been a really lovely day today, a bit cloudy, a bit sunny. 